Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Social justice, far left activism can literally only exist in times of abundance. You know, it's funny because the same academic leftoids who are constantly complaining about the evils of capitalism, well, their social justice activism literally cannot exist outside of capitalist abundance. And it seems as though they're learning the hard way. And actually, probably the funniest, most ironic part, it seems as though they were doing a whole lot better. It seems as though there was a whole lot more opportunity for them under the Trump administration than there is under the Joe Biden regime. Again, Joe Biden's you ain't black quote. You ain't black. Didn't exactly age well now, did it? Like an old carton of milk left in the sun on a hot sunny day. It's a really interesting phenomenon how times of abundance not only seem to create weak men but seem to breed little communist revolutionaries. Oh, how ironic how the anti-capitalist left literally cannot exist without capitalism. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, take a look at this piece from the Gateway Pundit. Liberal rage. Alt-left activists reveal that they are losing work in the Biden economy and they are triggered. Woke radical left agitators for years have utilized their power to fire conservatives from their jobs, depriving them of an opportunity to make a living. Now they're getting a taste of their own medicine. The massive layoffs sweep corporate America under the garbage Biden economy are now claiming so-called diversity, equity, and inclusion positions, DEI positions. The tech industry, for example, has laid off roughly a third of their DEI staff. Until now, these alt-left activists could count on multiple yearly invites from major corporations to indoctrinate employees. Some DEI figures have made thousands of dollars off single appearances. Now, apparently, the gravy train is starting to run dry and they are unhappy. Kira Davis at at redstate.com, located a tweet from Maddie.B, one of the DEI workers suddenly having a difficult time in the Biden economy. In her tweet, Maddie B whines that she is getting almost no work this year. This individual, Maddie B, a blue-haired unicorn, has since made her Twitter account private, but we still have the data from the tweet embedded in the article, as you can see here. I'm normally booked 15 times plus in Black History Month. This year, I'm booked once. Here's another individual, Jody N. Burry writing, Girl, zero. Last year, I had over 30 events on the calendar. Contracts signed. Deposits deposited. This year, nothing. Social Architect writes, I ain't even got booked once. Well, here's an idea, Mr. Social Architect. Maybe if you want to get more bookings, you should learn how to speak English. Mary on Twitter writes, Zero over here for the first time ever. John Paul Ed D. They them slash tired writes, They said we cared in 2020. That's enough. It's Kersey time writes, At corporations that care, when profits are at risk, the first thing they cut is the caring budget. Dr. Jen M. Jackson, they slash them writes, I honestly think people don't think black folk and our issues are hot right now. And a lot of white women are taking up space giving diversity and inclusion talks. Of course, the typical scapegoat when things aren't going your way, attack white people. Dr. Camille A. Jones writes, the performative allyship ride has come to an end. It's so telling. This one has to be the greatest copium. Angie Nixon writes, blame the Florida governor. Seriously, he's caused a lot of this. Ah, yes, it's white women's fault and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's fault. It's their fault that the economy has gone to complete and utter trash and you're no longer getting hired to give your social Marxism indoctrination speeches at various different events and corporations. Ah, all right. Sounds like copium to me. The reality is that it's not white women's fault. The reality is that it's not white women's fault. It's not Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's fault. It's just that, let's be real, you're at the bottom of the totem pole. When Netflix Netflix shed, I think, over 200,000 subscribers in a single quarter. What was first on the chopping block? What do you think? What do you expect? Meghan Markle's Garbage Woke Kids TV Show. I think a couple Obama programs as well. All the woke nonsense took the first hit. Because communist indoctrination garbage content is subsidized by corporate profits in a thriving capitalistic environment. You know, it's kind of like women's NBA, like women's basketball, being subsidized by the NBA, you know, real basketball. It cannot exist on its own because it's a bad product that people aren't interested in. People aren't interested in being lectured about gender ideology or cultural Marxism, intersectional feminism, being lectured in your own office at a corporate event about why it's not okay to be white. Yeah, that nonsense goes on the chopping block priority number uno. Some of these lefty activists at least are kind of picking up on the right thing. For instance, this tweet from
from its cursy time, and corporations that care when profits are at risk, first thing getting cut is the quote, caring budget. Kind of true, but not really pinpointing the real issue. Is it the caring budget, or is it the PR self-serving budget. Because listen, corporations aren't dumb and corporations aren't blind. They see the woke radical revolutionary type left and they know that it's probably not a good idea for them to get on your bad side. When you get on the bad side of the woke pitchfork and torch mob, things tend to get, let's just say, difficult when it comes to public relations. And so when you have money coming in, you gotta grease their palms a little bit in order to just be able to do your business. You know, very often people refer to these leftist activist groups, these mobs, as mafias. Well, in a way, it's kind of like the woke mafia. You have to pay for public relations protections, cancel culture protection, pay the woke left mob, bring in their speakers, chant their slogans, change your logo for a month, create a diversity, equity, and inclusion department in your office, buy off the woke revolutionaries so you can continue to do your business unimpeded. And that's essentially what it is. None of it has ever been organic. It's all been coerced and forced. I mean, you leftoids don't have a coherent platform. It's just a bunch of empty political rhetoric and sloganeering that accomplishes big fat nothing. These activists who are suffering from clear delusions of grandeur are shocked, dismayed, surprised when they realize their true influence, their real power in society. You know, if you were doing something of real significance, of real cultural significance, if you were bringing real value to the table, well then you probably wouldn't be first on the chopping block the moment markets started to hit some rough waters or some rough economic headwinds. Of course, the reaction is, oh, these evil corporations and evil capitalism. You don't exist without capitalism. Oh, we need socialism. Yes, because of course, racial equity, social justice is at the top of mind within socialist autocracies. No, dummies. Being a professional outrage artist, being a pseudo-intellectual leftist ideologue is the highest level of privilege. Most people facing real problems, facing real discrimination, aren't university graduates who get paid thousands upon thousands of dollars to speak poorly about white people, capitalism, and the evils of America. That's reserved for pompous, elitist, overly privileged leftoids who have nothing better to do than to complain about how hard it is and how terrible it is living in the most egalitarian, prosperous, and free country on the planet. Oh, the horror. Leftoids are stunned and shocked that their activist grift is an unsustainable endeavor. They're stunned as they realize that their influence isn't what they think it was, as they realize that they're truly useless and in most cases a nuisance. And that's kind of why I love capitalism. Because at the end of the day, capitalism is a system that only financially benefits value. And neo-Marxist cultural Marxist leftoids are realizing in rough economic times that they provide no value. And so it seems they're going broke. Get woke, go broke, I guess. You probably should have voted for Donald Trump and then maybe the economy would have been a little bit more stable and you'd still have a job lecturing white people on their inherent evilness and oppressive ways. That's what I got for you guys though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, we would love to have you here at the Liberal Hive Mind community. Thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you on the next one.